I want to talk about Big Blue's training camp, the last two joint practices with the Detroit Lions, preview the preseason game, talk about the scuffle with Daniel Jones at the center, the league neighbors being dominant, and much, much more. But first, folks, if you're watching, if you're new to the channel, make sure to check us out on all of our social media, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. YouTube is where we do all of our exclusive videos. So, First and foremost, Giants add yet another defensive back off of waivers from the Washington Commanders, Christian Holmes, a 2022 seventh-round draft pick. In turn, the Giants waive injured running back Ja'Shawn Corbin. Um, Holmes is an interesting prospect. He's 26 years old, 6'1", 205, was released by the Commanders on Monday, and then the Giants claim him uh, the same day, essentially. So it only took uh, a few hours for Holmes to find a new home, no pun intended. Um, this is primarily a special teams player, 30 games and two starts over the past two seasons, both starts coming in 2022, where he appeared in all 17 games. Uh, career stats for him, 20 tackles, one pass defended, two fumble recoveries. Definitely a special teams competitor. Now the Giants have added a lot of DBs this offseason. You know, we've talked about David Long Jr., uh, Breon Borders, just to name a couple. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Elijah Riley as well. So now the Giants have a deep DB room. Um, I don't necessarily think health is a concern with anybody. I think it's more just competition. Um, and we're seeing Isaiah Simmons play some of that backup nickel slot behind Drew Phillips. So I'm definitely very excited about the DB room. Now, let's get in to the joint practices with the Detroit Lions and the leak neighbors, the Giants sixth overall pick in this year's draft has shined, not just in the two joints, but in 11 on 11, seven on seven, he's shined all camp, rookie mini camp, training camp, you name it. Um, he's gotten the best out of Daniel Jones who sparked a scuffle the other day. You know, reporters are saying this is the most physical the Giants have been most exciting. The Giants have looked since 2013 in a training camp. Um, that was actually the last time I attended a training camp, two, 2013. Uh, look, Malik Neighbors might save Daniel Jones' career. He's that good. Um, finally, you have a one alpha receiver. Um, Brian Burns has shined as well, but let's talk about Neighbors. Uh, the Giants threw to him 17 times on Monday and Tuesday. He caught 16 of those 17 passes, including two 20-plus yard touchdowns. He's quick. He's elusive. He's got good hands. He's athletic, he could jump, and he doesn't have drop problems. He's only dropped one pass all camp. So I'm intrigued to see what happens come preseason, how many reps he gets on Thursday night against the Lions. And keep in mind, he's going up against Lions defenders like Kirby Joseph, Brian Branch. Um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with Malik in training camp. You know, the Recovery for Daniel Jones as well, who, I'll be honest, Daniel Jones has looked good. I've always been a Jones fan. You know, I've questioned his injuries more than his play. And now that, you know, the offensive line was improved a bit in the offseason with the signings of John Runyon and Jermaine Illuminor, Greg Van Roten as well, add him into the fray, Aaron Stinney. I mean, those are four veterans that haven't come at a big expense. I know Runyon costs $10 million, but... This isn't like a Kevin Zeitler level contract. This is not Nate Solder level, right? The Giants have invested in good, young, veteran players who will be around for a little bit, especially Runyon and Illuminar. So this has resulted in Daniel Jones looking really, really good in training camp. He has time to the side. He's very athletic. And I forget who it was. Van Roten mentioned something about playing for the Raiders last year under, you know, his offensive line coach, Carmen Brasillo, both coming over from Las Vegas. Um, Jones is a lot more mobile than the quarterbacks they had last year, like Aiden O'Connell um, and Jimmy Garoppolo. So all in all, the Giants are in a really good spot right now. Um, you know, Dan Daniel Bellinger's looking good, Isaiah Hodgins. And remember, they brought back a lot of the weapons that Daniel Jones has had the last two years. They've just upgraded with a Malik Neighbors, a Theo Johnson, a Jalen Hyatt. That's where things are getting better. Wandale Robinson is improving so much. He's twitchy. He's really hard to bring down an open space. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm excited for Daniel Jones in 2024. Now let's take a look at the unofficial depth chart. Um, 
couple interesting things here to break down. Let's first start off with the offense. What I'll do is I'll just share my screen and we'll go over my initial thoughts. So here's a look at the Giants offense. Um, of course, Daniel Jones is QB1. Um, you know, there's rumors if they'll keep three quarterbacks this year, you know, maybe they don't want Tommy DeVito to test waivers. Um, First interesting thing that pops into mind is Jalen Hyatt and Darius Slayton splitting one reps. Uh, again, Slayton is on a contract year. He's voiced his uh, opinions about wanting a new contract. You know, Jalen Hyatt could be the future number two receiver opposite of Malik Neighbors, but Slayton is old Mr. Reliable. He's really, really good for Daniel Jones, and I think having that depth and versatility this year of so many different receivers of different talents are going to you know, help this Giants offense hopefully have a big season. Um, let's see. Wandale Robinson in is the slot. Malik Neighbors, Daniel Bellinger slotted as the starting tight end. I do agree with this. Um, you know, Theo Johnson coming off of Pup. Um, Lawrence Cager at two. Um, a little surprising, but it makes sense. You know, he has the most experience out of all the tight ends on the roster with Big Blue. Um, Chris Manhurts brought in for blocking purposes, Jack Stoll, Tyree Jackson, a couple former Eagles trying to make the back end of the roster. So yeah, this makes sense. Interesting to see if Theo does move up. The Giants will likely keep four tight ends on the roster. Um, I do think they keep six receivers. It'll be interesting to see, but for right now, that's what we're looking at. Um, Offensive line, too. Aaron Stinney is penciled in as starting right guard with Greg, Greg Van Roten behind him. I think Van Roten will overtake Aaron Stinney, but I do think Stinney should make the roster. Another interesting thing, undrafted free agent Jake Kubis out of North Dakota State is listed as the third right guard ahead of 2022 fifth-round pick Marcus McKeithen, who's really struggled his first two seasons to find his footing. He is in jeopardy of making this roster. I would not blame Joe Shane and Brian Dable one bit if they do part ways with Marcus McKeithen. Uh, one other note for the offense here, uh, Jimmy Morrissey ahead of Austin Schlotman. Not sure what that's about, if you know they're splitting reps at the two or if Jimmy Morrissey has been that impressive. In training camp right now, we, we know John Michael Schmitz is nursing a shoulder injury. He won't play Thursday night. Um, Morrissey might take the starting reps at center, which is crazy to think about. Running back, no surprise there. Eventually, I'd be intrigued to see the Tyrone Tracy and Eric Gray uh, battle. So that's a look at the offense. Let's take a look at the defense. So again, the defense has looked really good in camp. You know, new defensive coordinator Shane Bowen this season. I'm really pumped to see what he brings to the table. Okay, so Brian Burns, Boogie Basham, no complaints there. Although Boogie, I don't think, is guaranteed a roster spot. Uh, Dexter Lawrence, behind him is where the depth gets interesting. We'll talk about this in a moment. Rakim Nunez, Rocha. So right now, they're looking at a 2-4-5 as a base set. Um, although on Hard Knocks, you did hear Bowen talk about three down linemen, four backers, and four DBs. Um, expect to see a mix of that and the 2-4-5, especially with the Giants lack of depth behind Dexter Lawrence. Um, they have guys that can play, just not anybody spectacular or anybody that is more than serviceable, right? Jordan Riley, day three pick last year. DJ Davidson, day three pick two years ago. You have Ryder Anderson, the undrafted free agent, entering his third season now. Jordan Phillips. I expect three of those four to make the roster behind Dexter Lawrence and Joaquin Nunez Roches. Again, unfortunately, there is time if somebody gets hurt that could free up a spot. Casey Rogers and Elijah Chapman are nice stories. Hopefully one or both of them makes the practice squad. Kayvon Thibodeau ahead of Aziz Ojolari definitely makes sense. Um, Aziz, a guy that has struggled with injuries. Kayvon Thibodeau had a borderline Pro Bowl year last year with 11 and a half sacks. Um, linebackers, this is where it might get interesting a little bit. Bobby Okereke, Mike McFadden. Easy peasy, but right now Deontay Johnson is penciled in as one of the two backup linebackers ahead of veteran Matthew Adams, ahead of sixth-round pick Darius Muisau. 
Johnson entering his second season with the team. Was a practice squad guy last year. Carter Coughlin as well, who's a special teams ace. Very excited to see what he will bring to the table in year five. Wasn't sure if they'd bring him back, but happy he is. Unfortunately, Beavers is on the outside looking in right now. Uh, long uphill road. Matthew Adams right now, I think, is on the outside looking in, unless they do keep six inside backers, which I don't think is likely. I think they keep five. So next up, the DB room. Drew Phillips, Tay Banks, Cordell Flott, three young guys picked in the last three drafts. Dane Belton, Jason Pinnock. Uh, all of these guys are Joe Shane and Brian Dable guys. Uh, very excited to see what happens with Isaiah Simmons listed as the backup nickel. Um, he's been getting reps there in the offseason and in training camp. Trey Herndon is further back at corner than I thought. I thought his resume would bring him a bit higher, but again, it's camp. It's beginning of preseason. There's still time. Um, next up, Elijah Riley ahead of Javarius Owens. Makes sense. You know, you don't want to blow a draft pick from just last year, but Owens was a day three pick, and Elijah Riley is probably better at special teams. So I would not be shocked if they do pick Riley over Owens with the three other safeties being locked in Newbin, Belt, and Pinnock. Corners, again, backups. You're looking at Trey Hawkins and Darnay Holmes, Nick McLeod, Definitely makes this team, in my personal opinion. Now the question is, will they keep Darnay, right? Darnay is on the bubble. I think the final spot comes down to Trey Herndon against Darnay Holmes. I think Christian Holmes is competition for Nick McLeod. Uh, I think McLeod wins that battle. Or maybe even Elijah Riley, right? Maybe Christian Holmes is competition for Elijah Riley. Who knows? So as of right now, this looks really good. Pinnock is the youngest member of the secondary, and he just turned, or the oldest member of the secondary, pardon, and he just turned 25. So that is pretty, pretty interesting. And finally, special teams. Um, I will share this quickly. Not much to see here, but uh, this will lead to an interesting roster battle between Gunnar Olszewski and Isaiah McKenzie. Right now, Olszewski is listed as the lead kickoff and punt returner. McKenzie is listed as the backup. So right now, McKenzie is on the outside looking in. Casey Kreider, Jamie Gillen, Graham Cano makes a lot of sense. They got the Irish kid out of Rutgers, Jude McCatney. Um, I think he's on the outside looking in, but he is an international exemption. He does not count against the 90-man uh, roster. So I'd be interested to see if he pushes Gano a little bit in the preseason. He wasn't that successful at Rutgers, but again, Euro kid trying to learn the pro-American style game of football. Um, yeah, so that's what the unofficial depth chart looks like right now. Um, yeah, my takeaways, Olszewski likely sticks around as wide receiver six right now due to his special team value. Um, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting to see based off of injuries, right? Evan Neal still on puff. John Michael Schmitz has been missing practice, so the O-line has some holes there. But they do have veterans they brought in, like Jermaine Illuminar, Greg Van Roten, Aaron Stinney. Um, I'm excited to see who makes the back end of the roster in the tight end room and the edge room specifically, Boogie Basham, Basham or Taman Fox. I think a lot of what we see in week one against the Lions in preseason Thursday night will be how does Daniel Jones look in the first drive or two if – he plays. That's a big if. I'm very excited to see Malik Neighbors for a drive, hopefully. But yeah, that's pretty much it, folks. Christian Holmes claimed off waivers. Neighbors has dominated camp. Daniel Jones is getting healthier, looks good. And the first preseason game is less than 48 hours away. Folks, make sure you check out us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, at Big Blue Avenue. Smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you check out all of our exclusive content. Sam and I will be back with more content coming up soon as we head towards the one month warning of the regular season folks appreciate you all and without further ado let's go big